Gears of War is back with all your favorite characters and all new graphics. Wait, what? How, the other game? Oh. So Gears of War 5 has been revealed, and we've been given a look at its new storyline, a different protagonist, and a handful of scenes capturing new gameplay. So what kind of technical changes are already visible in this really early showing of the game? Well, the biggest change for Gears that is immediately apparent when going to the trailer looks to be the seasonal conditions that the new game will be taking place in. Gears of War 4 primarily took place in the late summer or early autumn, with a lot of red and leaves scattered across the environment and a smattering of contained foliage dotting the game levels. Foliage in the first game was generally competently rendered when it was there, but given the game level setup and cover based formula, there was not much of it in the game space itself and you were not exactly interacting with it so much. It was more window dressing on the edge of the scenes you were playing in. So those few interactive elements in Gears of War 4's environment came about from destructible cover or those areas of the game racked by storms, with lightning pulsing down to the earth, large gusts of wind blowing away structures that get dislodged, or just generally doing silly things with ragdolls. Some of this interaction was controlled in real time by the player and the internal physics based physics engine in UE4, while others were scripted alembic or geometry cache animations. These allow for large-scale physics playback in real-time without overly taxing the CPU. The change of seasons in Gears of War 5 invariably means we'll see these type of interactions as we have before, so I would expect here to see some of those same storm-like effects and conditions, but with gameplay attached to whiteout-like blizzard events in the new game as well as some new interactions based on the seasonal change itself. So while in Gears of War 4 you did not interact much with these environmental conditions, and even with the snow in the game, which was more or less just a completely static texture, the presence of snow this time around being more integral to the story beat necessitates the fact that this environment cannot be so static as it was before in Gears 4, otherwise it would be pretty immersion breaking. The trailer thankfully though makes this change readily apparent right away that there will be an increased interactivity on this front. Here in the opening of the trailer, for example. As Kate runs forward, you can see how each footstep not only leaves a displaced footprint in the white pattern of the snow, but it also looks to reveal the color of the ground beneath the snow layer, which here is a muddy grayish brown. As the camera pans forward, it's possible to see that that snow layer, in this cinematic at least, looks to be actually 3D in nature, where the blood pool intersects with the snow near the corpse. If not real geometry perhaps, it looks to be some sort of parallax texture work which captures that look and feel of 3D rather well. So Gears of War 4 had some pretty good texture work in the end on character models, but beyond the environmental texture work, it was not utilizing the most advanced features of Unreal Engine 4, which has an awesome implementation of parallax occlusion mapping actually. So brick texture work, cobblestones, or grating was just generally covered with normal maps, making them look alright but not having any significant depth within them. So seeing the snow here looking to have actual depth is a nice upgrade over the first game. And such displacement on ground textures does not seem to be limited to the cutscene here, or just on snow as well, as a later gameplay portion of the trailer showcases a cobblestone ground that definitely is not just a normal map. Here when zooming in you can definitely see how there's defined raised edges and internal height variation on the surface itself. Looking around though at the snow covered environment present in the footage so far, it does look to be a variation of that same set of assets used for the civilian settlement found in the middle point of Gears of War 4. That makes me wonder a bit on the technical makeup of how they render that powdery layer of snow covering most objects. Whether they went back to the models and assets they already had and changed them in terms of geometry to have some snow covering them, or whether they made a procedural shader of sorts that can change and apply to objects in real time, probably saving production time. There's one tiny perhaps related hint though that points to the fact that the snow scattered across objects in this showing of Gears of War 5 is actually a dynamic shader effect and not part of the model itself. When Kate overlooks the settlement area in the trailer, she places her hand on the railing, and you can see how the contour and profile of that snow beneath her hand changes before her hand actually makes direct contact with the railing itself. It seems to displace the snow on the railing in the shape of her hand.
You can see it very briefly as well in the initial scenes as Kate runs up to that same hand railing. Hopefully this is not just a one-off custom pre-baked animation for the cutscene, as this tiny visual hint points to the fact that snow, well at least in the cinematic here, is a shader effect on top of the base geometry itself. Furthermore, it would mean that it is an effect that can be deformed and displaced as models come in proximity with it. How it is done is completely unknown without further analysis, but it sure is neat. And should it be there in the gameplay as well, it would really add that extra layer of realism to the snowscape environments that we've seen in other games like Rise of the Tomb Raider, Horizon Zero Dawn, or the most recent God of War. This change in interaction and physics due to the seasonal change in the gameplay does not appear to just be visual stuff reserved for the cinematics themselves, as later gameplay shows showcasing parts of the trailer show off Kate and Del skating around on the skiff, presumably with skatey ice physics underneath it. And it is a gameplay element you will apparently spend a healthy amount of time with in Gears 5. This scene also showcases reflections on the ice that are not screen space reflections, interestingly enough. Were they to be screen space reflections, which we've seen in Gears of War 4 to this point, then the skiff sails intersecting with the reflections would cause them to disappear, and depth occluded out of existence when the sails cross in front of the camera view. Should this in fact be real gameplay here, I would imagine they would be using those planar reflections added in Unreal Engine 4.12, which is more expensive as you are essentially doubling geometry on a visual plane below the ice surface, but planar reflections allow for better reflections on surfaces like this in general, and it doesn't have those problems that we always see with screen space reflections. So it seems that ice rendering is pretty important to this game. Alongside a nice graphical feature like that in the ice planes, the following scene in the trailer also shows off a rather convincing ice shading effect on the icicles. These icicles covering the tree branches look to have a convincing subsurface scattering effect as can be seen by the changing of hue from light whites to pale blues as it simulates light scattering through its denser and less dense areas as well as a slick sheen that can be seen covering its light facing surface. In the background here you can also quite well see how shadows are visible through the back sides of that ice layer on the trees as they sway around. Looks pretty great. Thankfully, ice-covered plains and snow-swept mountains are not the only biomes shown off in the trailer. In one quick scene, Kate appears to be repelling into a gorge of sorts filled with a dense layer of tropical vegetation, which even in the short glimpse can be seen to be moving around in the wind. Just this brief scene showcases quite a bit more vegetation than is found in many of the scenes in Gears of War 4, and if the vegetation does exist in the gameplay space in Gears of War 5, it could offer up some cool interaction elements and physics opportunities like bending leaves or being able to be shot apart an element which was pretty sorely lacking in Gears of War 4's stages. Alongside an apparent greater density of vegetation, the trailer also shows off much greater usage of volumetric lighting than found in Gears of War 4. While Gears of War 4 did have volumetric lighting to an extent, it was just really limited to certain scenes or very specific small lights, or perhaps was not always necessarily fully volumetric, did not appear to be a global effect that was in every scene, and when it was there, it was sparingly used. Looking here at the trailer though, you can see volumetric shadows cast through the air in this scene in the snow-covered areas of the game, and here you can also see shadows filled through the air in this rust and sand blanketed hangar, or here in this scene softly lighting this mini boss character from above. The effect itself showcases typical artifacts you can expect of real-time volumetric lighting, like a general hazy look and having an unstable appearance in motion, as you can see here when zooming in. Notice it fizzle and crackle as the camera and volumetrics themselves move. It's hard to know from the trailer itself, but since Gears of War 4 came out, Unreal Engine has added a state-of-the-art voxelized volumetric fog, which can be used for any and every light source in a scene and generally has a flat cost. So it would be pretty unsurprising to see such a great effect implemented into Gears of War 5. It would also explain its greater usage in the scenes we've seen so far. Moving away from environment and lighting, the character models look to have also gotten some nice aesthetic upgrades in comparison to Gears of War 4. Gears 4 definitely did not have bad character modeling at all at the time of the release. In fact, I'm pretty sure Dell has some of the best shaded hair in all of gaming. Gosh. I'm completely jealous of this dude's hair. Anyway, but the most flashy and eye-catching part of the trailer has to be the character modeling, and especially their faces and movement. Under that assumption that is not just a difference in lighting here, when looking at JD in this scene, it's hard not to think that the eye and skin rendering looks quite a bit better this time around in Gears of War 5, or just generally how much higher fidelity the deformation and animation looks on his face when he talks. This schlubbier version of JD looks to have more accurately rendered teeth and skin as well.
the general resolution of the textures themselves on the face also look to be better this time around. All in all, characters look to reach a higher height in the cutscenes of this trailer than they did in Gears of War 4, which is quite the accomplishment as they already looked really great before, I think. Now I'm just curious how much of that increase in character animation fidelity crosses into the game dialogue itself as in-gameplay facial animations always looked a bit mechanical and robotic in Gears of War 4. Regarding cinematics themselves, I really do hope this time around a majority of them end up not being pre-recorded FMVs like they were in the first game. While the first game did have a number of real-time cinematic sequences, a lot were just in fact pre-rendered sequences, so you could be playing the game at 4K or 60fps in one scene, only to be presented with a 1080p pre-recorded video at 30fps but a heartbeat later. It was pretty jarring when it happened. Though the differences in clarity present here in the trailer would give cause to hope that more cutscenes in Gears of War 5 are actually going to be rendered in real time, as the quality shown off here does look to be a fair bit above the quality of the FMVs from the last game. And if not just for clarity and fluidity's sake, I hope that this is the case for the game file size in the end for that shipping product. The idea of also having to download 4K pre-rendered cinematics is making my skin crawl here when I think about how Gears of War 4 on PC is currently 130 gigabytes these days. Oof, let's avoid that if we can, okay? The one area of the trailer that I think looked a little bit less than stellar would have to be the shadow filtering found in the last scene as Kate and Dell investigate this bunker complex. So Gears of War 4 did not seem to have the budget for a lot of dynamic shadows, as it was based on Xbox One base hardware. So the final game even on PC tended to have a mix of baked shadows and real-time ones. Perhaps this acne on the edge of the shadow maps here is just because the low angle of the shadow caster, as real-time shadows in other scenes are much crisper and much more smooth. Or perhaps it's just a side effect of them having more real-time shadows this time around, so their quality needs to take a hit in a couple scenes. Or perhaps it's because we're looking at Xbox One X footage here in this trailer, and Gears of War 5 will in fact be targeting 60fps on all modes on release on Xbox One X. That's right, it's pretty commendable stuff if you ask me. I imagine they're going to get to 60fps this time around by taking advantage of dynamic resolution like they did in the last game, as well as probably using the new temporal reconstruction filter that has been provided in Unreal Engine and is being made use of in Fortnite and that framerate target would easily affect shadow quality in a lot of scenes. Either way, it would be nice to see it cleaned up. So there you have it. The trailer for Gears of War 5 shows an incremental increase in rendering fidelity for the series at this current point in time at least. There are some cool tidbits there hopefully pointing at some new interaction as well this time around, with areas like snow and vegetation looking to be quite a bit more dynamic in this game. And with that being said, thanks for taking the time to watch this video. If you found it to be informative at all, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, or if you're already subscribed, ring that bell in the corner to get notifications about Digital Foundry videos as soon as they come out. If you want to discuss the Gears of War series with me in any capacity, just write a comment below or follow me and Digital Foundry on Twitter. This is Alex, bidding you farewell und auf Wiedersehen.